Hello. In this video, I will walk you through using this 2D CAD drawing to create this 3D CAD model using Onshape, which is a free web-based CAD design software. In the description below, I have links to videos explaining how to create and set up your own Onshape account and workspace. In this video series, I start from scratch, so this video is for the complete novice. And I'll show you some speed tricks and shortcuts if you are interested in the growing sport of speed CAD, as promoted by the amazing Too Tall Toby. So let's take a look at our 2D drawing. This is an orthographic view of a rectangular box. We say this is a third angle projection, which means this face is the front face, and this one is the right face, and this is the top face. The title block in the lower right corner gives us a lot of information, such as where this drawing comes from. Here, you can see it is from PC Arduino, which is my educational resources company. It also gives us the part name and the sketch units. Here, we are in millimeters, grams, and seconds, so these dimensions shown are in millimeters. For all you artists out there, I also give the RGB color codes of my models in case you want to fully recreate them. The material and density of the part is critical for these challenges because without that information, you would be unable to measure the mass of your part and determine if you modeled it correctly. I also make a guess as to the level of difficulty and experience needed to design the part. Here, we're starting at level one. And there are some other details such as version numbers, dates, scales, and the drafter, which is me, Chris Odom. Notice that some of the dimensions are enclosed in parentheses. This indicates a redundant or unnecessary value as this information is contained elsewhere in the drawing. As the level of difficulty increases, I'll include fewer redundant values as per industry norms. CAD designers have two things to help them. The first one is a mouse, and this is critical. Don't even think of progressing far in CAD design using only a trackpad. The other thing is a second monitor, which allows you to simultaneously see the 2D drawing while working on the 3D CAD. I'll go ahead and move my drawing over to my second monitor now. If you have a printed copy of my 2D to 3D Challenges workbook, a second monitor may not be necessary. Let me know if you are interested in purchasing your own copy. Earlier, I mentioned my favorite CAD expert is Too Tall Toby. Notice that I have a TTT folder dedicated to my models of his 2D practice drawings. Toby is an incredible teacher and his tutorials and instructional videos are some of the best there are. And while Toby's models are amazing practice and are so much fun for me, he does not have many simple models for the absolute beginner, which is why I am making this series. I will start with the most basic design and work up toward the more complex ones like the ones on Toby's site. So let's get started with the most basic design, a simple rectangular block. I prefer to organize my designs into folders, so I'll create one named Models for YouTube Videos. I'll then navigate to that folder and create a new document. I'll call it Simple Block, using the name from the title block in the 2D drawing. I'll first double check that the units for my model match those for the 2D drawing. Here, we see the drawing uses metric units of millimeters and grams, and my workspace units match those, so we are good to go. We always start with a new sketch, so I will click the Sketch button. Next, we need to select some plane or flat surface on which to draw. For this video, I'll use the top plane. 
Now I can toggle off the planes to clear up my workspace. I'll orient my sketch so that I'm looking down on it, like a sheet of paper would be on my desk. Clicking on the top face of the view cube zooms us to this view. Notice that I can zoom in and out with my mouse's scroll wheel. Because we are working on the top face, let's take a quick peek at the 2D drawing and remind ourselves of the top face's dimensions, which are 63 by 15 millimeters. Symmetry is important when designing in CAD, so I'll draw this face using a center point rectangle around the origin. I first need to grab the proper tool. Then I'll click on the origin, drag my mouse outward some arbitrary amount, and then release the mouse button. Notice the bottom dimension has a little box around it, which means all we need to do is start typing the value for this dimension. So I'll simply type 63 and press enter. This automatically moves the little box around my next dimension, so I'll enter a value of 15 for the width. Notice I did not use my mouse to click in the text box. I simply started typing. Hitting the Enter key will fix the dimensions of my box. If you do make a mistake and try to click inside the dimension box, a new rectangle will be created like this. If this happens, simply press the Undo button or use Ctrl Z. Then select the Dimension tool or press the D key and click on each side to give them the proper dimensions like so. Notice the box is now black, which means it is fully constrained. This means the dimensions and its location are fully defined, and this is what we want every time we make a sketch. I'm finished with this sketch, so I'll click the little green check to save it and close the sketch. I'll rotate the view a little bit so the next steps are easier to see. Now it is time to extrude or pull the top face to the desired height. A quick glance at the 2D drawing shows us it should be 30 millimeters. So click on the extrude tool, then select the face you wish to extrude. In the depth field, replace the default value of 25 millimeters with our desired value of 30 and press the green check to save and exit the extrude tool. Notice the height changed by five millimeters. We can double check each dimension by clicking on each edge and noting the length in the bottom right corner. Before clicking on the next edge, you'll either need to press the space bar or click off into a white space to deselect the first line. CAD modelers usually perform a so-called spin test to give the model a final look before declaring the model complete. Let's change the name of the part from Part 1 to Simple Block. Next, I'll set the material of the block to Aluminum Alloy 1060 as indicated in the title block. Do that by right-clicking on the part name and choosing Assign Material. Choose the Onshape Material Library. Then scroll to the proper material, being sure to select the correct alloy, which is 1060, which has the proper density of 2,700 kilograms per cubic meter. Press the green check when done to fix the material. To check if your mass matches the value given on my 2D drawing, click on the part name, then press the Display Mass Properties button. Note the mass is within the desired tolerance, so we know we successfully have designed this part. Sweet! If you want to put the finishing touches on the model, you can change its color to match mine. Consult the RGB code on the title block, then right-click on the part name and select Edit Appearance. 
enter my RGB codes, or pick your own color, then press the green check to accept the changes. Well, that's all there is to creating your first part in Onshape. If you learned something from this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing. I've got two more videos on this very simple design. In the next one, I'll show you how to use shortcut keys to make the same model more quickly. And in the third video, I will point out some of the common mistakes and things that confuse a lot of people, even with this simple design. Thanks for watching.